Hello. Hello. Where's your harness? Where's your harness? <laughs> her harness is already too small. It was too tight on her, so I had to take it off. So she's not going to have a harness for a while. Good girl, Hella. Hella. Good girl potty outside. Yes. Good girl. Good girl. All right, you come on. Let's go. You go in. I'm going to make a video. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Get in. Get in. Good girl. All right. All right, everybody. <laughs> um, I'm working on training her. She's actually doing really, really good. She actually woke me up at like 6.30 this morning, was whining, and I took her out, and she did number one and number two. So I was really happy about that. So I think she might actually be starting to get it, which is a good thing. But I'm going to turn this around. We ended up clearing out pretty good here today at the homestead as far as... Uh, you know, overcastness. The the sun kind of came out for a little bit. Uh, we did have some clouds, but we definitely pulled some power in, which is a good thing. Uh, the less that we have to run the generator this time of year, the better. <laughs> and the days are getting longer, so that's a good thing too. All right, so let's get into the topic of this video. Where should I hide food, and how should I hide food? Okay. Now, there is a ton of ways guys just a, a, a unbelievable tremendous amount of ways that you could hide food uh, I'm going to just give you an example of something that, something that you could do all right this uh, and, and again it really depends on your climate uh, where you are because you know up here in New York you better be under the frost line so you better be down uh, about four feet if you don't want whatever you have to freeze or unfreeze and stuff like that so, like, here's a good example of a place that you could actually hide food and you don't actually have to go down four feet. You could take in the center of one of these beds and you could dig down, uh, farther down into the ground, obviously. Bury a stash, a cache, if you will, of uh, food and then cover everything back over and have your normal garden bed. Okay? That is absolutely a very real way that you could do that and that would absolutely work and uh, and it looks just looks like a normal garden and then you know if somebody dug up the garden and got down to the ground uh, there's nothing in there okay so you go below that level and so that's kind of a smart thing to do now now that I've said that I'm like man I should I should do that <laughs> but anyway um, that would be one way to do that having caches uh, either on your property or off-site is another way. So where do you put them off-site? I mean, how do you know somebody's not going to come in there and dig it up and, uh, you know, and those type of things? Well, you want to go places where uh, easily easy to find, that you don't even have to, like, mark anything on a map. Uh, you know, you could basically say, okay, uh, on a highway. A good, a good example is on a highway. So you go to a rest area on a highway... And, you know, you figure, okay, well, I'm going to go in X, Y, Z number of feet in off the highway. And obviously you're going to go at a time when there's not going to be a lot of people around. You know, that's obviously one of the ways that you want to do that. But those are good spots, um, as far as I'm concerned, because they're not going to develop them. Uh, those are places that are rest areas. They're on the highway. They're not going to change. Uh, it's a good spot to do that, uh, to hide things in those areas. So I think that's a, you know, there's a, a great spot if you want to have something off-site. Have things at uh, other people's properties. You know, have somebody that you trust, um, you know, false floors, uh, you know, um, you know, false walls. Like, okay, so you're, you're okay, Prepper Nurse 1, I'm in the city, how am I going to hide things in my apartment? Well, you put in a false wall. You can, you know, and realistically, how far out do you have to go? Two feet? So you take your existing wall that's there. Uh, you have some way that you can get back in there. But you can store a tremendous amount of stuff, floor to ceiling, in a two-foot spot. Uh, a lot of stuff can be stored there. So if somebody breaks into your apartment looking for food or whatever the case may be, 
They're going to find not, they're going to find some stuff. They're going to find the stuff that you leave out for them to find. But they wouldn't find that other stuff behind a false wall because they wouldn't know that there's a false wall there. Um, so that's one way that you can do it. Now, obviously, if you live in an apartment, that's going to be kind of tough to do, get it around your landlord. But, um, you know, it's, it's a thought. It's, it's something you can do in a house as well, obviously. You can have a false floor, uh, false, you know, false wall, and those type of things. It's just a, it's, it's a good way to store stuff away out of out of people's sight so that like if somebody does break into your home they're not going to find you know find everything that you have uh, keeping all your eggs in one basket is really not a smart way to do it now you have to make a decision too what are you stocking away what are you putting away in that that area that you could uh, you know utilize later on and stuff like that so here would be some suggestions that I would suggest Obviously, your freeze-dried foods, whatever company you want to go with. I'm not going to tell you what company to go with. You can go with whatever one makes you feel comfortable. But freeze-dried foods have a tremendously long shelf life. Absolutely something that I would put uh, behind a false wall that could store for a very, very long time, and you won't have to worry about it. Water purification things, okay? Um, some way to purify water back there as well, uh, you know. And so there, there's a lot of options out there as well, so you can make a decision of what you want to do as far as that go, uh, as far as that goes. You could store gear back there as well, you know, warm weather gear, cold weather gear, you know, all kinds of stuff that could be stored back in, in that type of an area. But, uh, you know, obviously you're not going to probably store water back there because in a long, long term, if it, you know, if it's sitting back there for five or ten years, just for you know who knows how long it would be there you know water keeping it in plastic or whatever probably not a good idea okay but again uh, if you have some way to purify water that's going to make a difference because the rain's not going to stop it's not going to stop raining and again it really depends on what part of the country you're in too so every different parts of the countries you're going to have different priorities i mean you get down south and you've got a tremendous amount of you know humidity and stuff like that you have to take those things into consideration so i mean if you can find places that you can um you know a cave and and coordinate part of that cave off and seal part of that cave off put stuff in there and then you know that way it's going to be there when you get back now if i'm going to use a cave i'm probably going to use galvanized garbage cans store stuff in there so mice and other things and other creatures don't get into it you know you don't want to have something where you come back later on and you're wait, hoping for all these supplies to be there and they're already all eaten because you just put them in there in plastic or something like that that's probably not a smart idea not a good way to do it uh, again, there's a lot of options out there. Um, I definitely encourage people not to keep everything on site. It's just not a smart practice to do. Um, having caches, even having caches buried on your property is a good thing if you have property. But again, if you have uh, other places that you could put a cache in, um, go to a neighbor. And if, you're, if you have a good relationship with them, you know, in the back corner of the property or whatever way that you wanted to do it, um, you could have a really good way. I got to see what's going on over here because uh, they're just they're just complaining with each other. Okay, so what you hear? We're gonna go, we'll walk over here. I want you guys to see this. So you hear noise inside, and that is actually uh, Goliath inside because both of the young boys and Foghorn Leghorn are outside. <laughs> so I don't know what he's raising cane about, so they're raising cane out here as well. Um, at some point, they will, you know, they go in and they roost up and everybody goes to bed. But, uh, yeah, I, I still, guys, as far as these other two roosters, I am torn. I don't know what to do. Um, I don't want to kill them. That's, you know, that's, they're, they're good roosters. I mean, look at them. They're nice, healthy boys. Um, so, again, if anybody needs a rooster, I mean, look at these two guys. They're beautiful. Good, good-looking roosters. So, they'll make, if, you're, if you have the ladies, they will make your ladies happy. 
So anybody that would be interested in a rooster, uh, please let me know. But uh, anyway, again, if you're storing stuff, um, like even in an outbuilding, let's say I was going to store uh, something here in my loft up in the upper area of my uh, chicken coop, okay? Just, I'm just saying, I don't have anything in there, but let's say that I did. What I have to think about is what creatures can get in there, what's the cold and, and a hot temperature is going to be, what would I store in there where you're going to have those extreme temperatures, um, you know, in that area. So you have to think about that as well. So um, those are all things that play into what you're going to do and where you're going to store stuff. And there's Mr. Foghorn Leghorn. What's up there, mister? What's up, buddy? They're pretty cool. There was a lot more of the, the birds were out earlier. Now it's quiet inside. I don't know what they were complaining about, but uh, there's a couple of the girls in the doorway. That actually, if you see her in the doorway, that's one of the babies. Um, that is one of the... Look how big she is now. Jeez. <laughs> They've grown up so fast, but, uh, so, yeah, they're good chickens. I, I like my chickens. Oh, so anyway, I was talking about Hella there. She has outgrown that harness, so I have to get another harness for her. I want to go with a harness. I really don't want to go with a collar, um, because I don't want to be yanking on her that way. With a harness, it's more controlled, and it's not um, as harsh on the dog. So, now, Pandora has a collar, okay? She does very, very well with a collar, no issues whatsoever. But as uh, Hella is growing, and I think she's going to be a big dog, <laughs> um, she, uh, you know, I, I like having that harness on her. So that's what we're going to continue to do. So I have to go buy another harness again. So, but I'm going to try to get one that's going to be bigger <laughs> this time. So, anyways, I want to hear what you guys have to say. What do you think? Um, you know, where are good places to hide food? Where should you be hiding food? Um, again, you know, it, it's, a, it's a tough call because, again, you don't know weather-wise where, you know, depending on where you are in the country, how that's going to affect it. Um, you know, moisture, uh, condensation, you know. That's why I like to vacuum seal a lot of stuff. Um, when you vacuum seal stuff, you get all the air out of there, and it's going to last, and it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, do much, much better in the long term. Obviously, we have a lot of temperature variations up here, but when I have like beans and rice and those type of stuff in outbuildings, which I do, um, it it works out really good because there's definitely not any larva or anything in there because it's you know they've had that you know frozen and stuff like that. But with everything vacuum sealed, there's no oxygen getting in as well, so that's always a good thing as well. So. Anyway, um, I definitely want to hear your guys' feedback on this. I want to hear what you guys have to say. So where do you think are good spots that maybe I haven't said that you should be hiding food? Because um, you definitely should be putting stuff away that people do not know that you have or where you have it. Okay. So um, again, if you have a cellar, you can again coordinate and cut off part of that cellar to make it look like it's not even there. Uh, you know, a brick wall. Uh, and just seal it up and have a whole bunch of stuff behind that area that people don't know that's there. Uh, just, a, just something to think about, okay? So anyway, I'm going to jump off of here for now. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. hope everybody's had a wonderful day. It's been a very cold day here today at the homestead. Thank goodness no wind, but uh, it's just one of those kind of days. But uh, we did get some sunshine, which is good again, and uh, so we'll go from there. All right, I will talk to you all later. I hope everybody has a great night. Uh, remember, we are all in this together. That is important to remember. Also remember to hug and kiss the ones you love. Tell them every single day. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen in life. So it's really important that you tell the people that you care about every day how you feel. Also remember STD, step, thing, and day. It's one step at a time, one thing at a time, and one day at a time. Whatever you are trying to do, whatever you are trying to accomplish, you can do it. The only one that can stop you from reaching those goals is you. Nobody else can stop you. Stay positive. Stay away from negative people that want to bring you down. Okay? It's so important. Uh, I'm a great example of that. I could not tell you how many people that told me I could not do what I have done here. Couldn't believe a number of people that said, oh, no, there's no way that will ever work. You're never going to be able to do it. Well, here we are six years later. We're still doing it, making it better. 
a uh, lot of work, but well, well worth it. Okay, I'm going to jump off. I'll talk to you guys all tomorrow. Prepper Nurse One, out for now.